Welcome everyone. I'm Leslie Verner from Carolina Breast Friends and we are so excited to have this episode of Pink House Kitchen. Tonight we're talking about holiday appetizers and festive cocktails. So we love having Laura Coleman, our favorite chef with us again and a breast cancer survivor and Casey Curry who has been with us uh, once in the spring talking about um, how to make her favorite holiday cocktails. So I will just turn it over to the two of you and thank you so much for doing this for us tonight. Thank you. I am very excited to be here and courtesy of Laura for facilitating this and making me a part of a wonderful group of ladies. Um, so we are going to start with our first cocktail. This one's super easy. But before I start, I do want to preface this by saying if you plan to make our third cocktail, which is our New Year's Eve cocktail, I'm going to ask you to put your oven on broil right now. I know that sounds crazy, but if you plan to make the third cocktail along with us, go put your oven on broil because we're going to need to slowly make the third cocktail. So we're basically going to brulee a grapefruit. Um, that being said, my oven's already on broil because I knew it was coming. So we will get right into the first Thanksgiving cocktail. Um, what's Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie or apple cider? So working, how I know Laura actually is through her husband, John. Um, I am one of his employees and I work for the distilling side of the company. We produce a pumpkin whiskey, which is actually a pumpkin spice flavored whiskey. It's a low proof alcohol and it's only about 35%. So it's more along the cordial side of things, but it's a great aperitif and it's a great just shot by itself. Um, that being said, I wanted to use the pumpkin spice in the actual liquor itself to bring out those Thanksgiving traditional elements. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the cocktail out of the pumpkin whiskey and then also our straight bourbon, which is just a traditional bourbon. However, you can use any kind of whiskey that you prefer. And then also pumpkin whiskey isn't available everywhere. There's not a lot of different pumpkin flavored whiskeys as well. There's a few on the market. So to substitute this, you can always just use the pumpkin pie spice. I just recommend using a very little dash because you can always add more, but you can never add less. So this one's super simple to begin with. You're gonna take your Collins glass, which mine is just a plain Collins glass, and I'm gonna fill it up with ice, which is over to my right. So I'm gonna pop out of the screen for a minute. Sorry if that's loud. So you're gonna fill your Collins glass completely with ice. And then I'm gonna take my pumpkin whiskey and I'm gonna take my jigger, which is right here. And a jigger is just basically a shot measure or a measuring cup. Um, if you don't have a jigger, typically drinks are measured in one ounce measurements. You can always use an eighth of a cup if you have measuring cups. So one eighth cup equals one ounce. I love seeing the liquor bottles come out. This is so exciting. <laughs> so. We're going to take one ounce of pumpkin whiskey. You're going to add it into your jigger or your measuring cup. And I do recommend measuring because no one likes an overkilled cocktail. It's just gross. No one wants to drink liquor to the face unless you're that kind of person. But yeah. And then we're also going to add one ounce of straight bourbon or whichever bourbon you prefer. Pour it in your jigger. Dump it into your cocktail glass. Tap your liquor back up. And then you're going to top with your favorite type of apple cider. This is just a cold pressed apple cider I found at Publix. Um, so I had shaken it up earlier. Typically, cider has to remain cold. So just make sure it's not out on shelf storage if it asks to be refrigerated because you don't want it to ferment. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever had fermented apple cider, but it's not very good. So if you just top it off, I'm making a mess, which is fine, but now you're going to stir and stir it well because you don't want that liquor sitting at the bottom of the cocktail. And my favorite part of the drink is making it look pretty. So you're going to take an apple and you're going to turn it to the side 
I'm going to move this out of the way. Can you guys see it? I'm lower because I don't have a kitchen island, so I'm on my dining room table. And you're going to actually cut across like this. So you have the wide side of the apple. So I have an apple slice like this, and then I'm going to cut a little slice in it so it spreads wide open, and you can garnish your little cocktail like this. And that's it. Literally so easy. You can take a sip, but this is in the way. <laughs> and that's delicious. So if you wanted to make this without the pumpkin whiskey, you absolutely could. Um, you would just add a little bit of the pumpkin pie spice instead and stir it up really well. Wow, that's really good. Okay. Laura, do you have a I have to compliment? I do have an appetizer to compliment. So I will preface, it, preface this with saying, I really, really wanted to try that cocktail. And of course we always have all of that liquor in our house because that's where John works. But he gave all of our pumpkin whiskey away. So I got all this stuff and I came home and I was like so excited to make it. And I'm like, where's the pumpkin whiskey? And it's gone. Anyway, with that being said, I've decided to kind of focus on phyllo shells. So if you guys are familiar with them, Athens, Trader Joe's, they all make these little phyllo shells, which are so versatile and so fun. And I like them because they're very elegant looking um, without a lot of work and you can fill them with almost anything. So I've decided to kind of go with a little savory Mediterranean. So I want to add like a little sweetness to kind of this, the, um, spiciness um, and saltiness to the spiciness, sorry, the spicy, sweet and salt. So I've decided to kind of do like a little hummus tartlet so that you guys have seen this recipe before. So I'm just showing you how to do it a different way. So if you remember how we took the hummus and spread it on, the, on a nice platter and we topped it with cucumber and olives and tomatoes and then some feta cheese. So we're just gonna do that same little thing but we're gonna do it in the little phyllos. So what I did is I took the phyllos, I popped them in the oven just to kind of crisp the shells. They come already pre-baked, but I like to crisp them up a little more. I threw them in the oven at 350 for about four minutes. So I'm going to start with all my ingredients. It's super easy. So I have these already. So I'm just going to take four or however many phyllo shells you want to make. And for me, it's just me and my husband tonight. So I am going to just do four because we're going to have a lot to kind of taste and I'm just going to put a little dollop of hummus you can put any flavor hummus you wanted in here if you wanted to do pumpkin hummus for the holidays you can use pumpkin hummus um, regular just plain old uh, you know chickpea hummus you know with no flavoring in it I love red pepper hummus so that's what I've put in here if you want to take it up like another little step notch you can put a little I'm going to do two and two. I kind of like to put a little dash of Greek yogurt in here because what that Greek yogurt is going to do is it's going to make it kind of more feel like a little bit of, of a tzatziki. And then I'm going to cut up my veggies. And I know I grabbed my knife, excuse me. I have my knife. I'm just going to quarter a Persian cucumber. And I'm just gonna cut it up into little pieces. And I just start sprinkling. So a few cucumbers on each one. And I'm using some cherry tomatoes cause that's a great tomatoes. That's what I have in the house. So I wanna use this up, but whatever tomatoes you have, sometimes I really like to um, use uh, heirloom tomatoes. They're just super pretty. It just adds another element like color wise. Put that on there. And then a couple of olives. So these are just sliced olives. So I can just put a little piece of olive on each one. John really likes olives. So I'm gonna put two olive, two more olive on his. 
And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of feta cheese and I'll crumble a little feta cheese on. And then I want to add that a little bit of dill. Now you could add dill, you could add a little bit of um, parsley, but I'm doing the dill on the ones that have the sour cream because, and not the sour cream, the Greek yogurt. There is no sour cream in this recipe. And then on the other ones, I just do like a little flake of parsley, just a little leaf of parsley and it makes it look nice and pretty Put it in there. And then I just plate it. I'll do, I'll alternate one dill, one parsley, one dill, one parsley, and there you go. So what I love about these two is like, it's whatever you want to put in there. Like if you're making chicken salad and you have leftover chicken salad, right? And you have people coming over the next day or whatever, especially during COVID, because we all have so much company during COVID. You know, I always have a, a box of these in my, in my freezer and I pull them out and I put leftovers in there. This will be great for Thanksgiving. You could use uh, the leftover cranberry sauce and a little turkey in there with a little mashed potato on top, which would be delicious. Or maybe a little bit of stuffing and turkey and gravy and throw that in there and there you go. All Laura, right, Casey. You had me you had me at cranberry and stuffing and mashed potatoes in a kilo cup. I was like, oh my God, you are speaking my language. <laughs> that sounds absolutely incredible. Um, I won't lie, I'm a little jealous I'm not there this time and that I'm in my house eating pomegranate seeds as we sit here and some of your wonderful appetizers. So um, like I said, we are going to take the next step onto the third cocktail if that's what you're planning on making. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Um, the only reason I'm going to do this is because the grapefruit needs to cool before we touch it. It gets very, very hot. Um, so our third cocktail is a New Year's Eve inspired cocktail. And so it's kind of a mimosa along the way. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to take, um, sorry, I forgot to grab my bowl. You're going to take a half a cup of sugar. Got to grab all this. Casey, are you doing New Year's Eve or are you doing Christmas? I need to start. I need to get the the grapefruit um, creme brulee before we do the New Year's Eve. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna creme brulee the grapefruit, put it in the broiler because it needs to cool before we actually make the cocktail. Otherwise, we're gonna burn our hands and nobody wants hot grapefruit juice. So. We're gonna take a half a cup of fine granulated sugar. You're just gonna pour it in the measuring cup. I spilled it all over my mint, it's fine. Um, then you're gonna take vanilla. Um, typically this calls for vanilla beans, but vanilla beans are very expensive. I don't know if anybody's ever like looked to buy a full vanilla seed, but they're expensive. So we're going to take vanilla extract because everybody typically has that on hand anyway. And you basically only need enough to moisten the uh, granulated sugar. So I'm going to start with half of a teaspoon. You may need more, which is fine, but only add it at a teaspoon at a time because you don't want it to get too moist. So I added half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and I'm literally just gonna stir it up in my bowl. Which looks very interesting right now. Trust me, this is good. I did try it yesterday. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna need a little more. So I'm just gonna add an extra little splash of vanilla extract. And you're just gonna keep stirring the vanilla extract into the granulated sugar. And basically you just want it to maintain that powdery substance. You don't want it to be thick and chunky like a liquid. And the reason we're doing this is because we are going to brulee a grapefruit with vanilla and sugar. It ends up being absolutely delicious and it makes a great mimosa, but these are the steps we have to take before we can actually make the cocktail itself. Okay, so I have a real, I wish I could show you guys a better 
So I've got a really good like kind of consistency to my sugar. It's definitely my white sugar has been hinted to a light brown. Um, it's a good basis to go off on with color, but of course, if you're not working with refined sugar and you just have natural brown sugar, you know, you need to kind of have that pliable, almost like wet sand texture. So what you're gonna do after that is you're gonna take a grapefruit. So I cut my grapefruits in half and you're gonna take one entire grapefruit and you're basically just gonna pat the sugar down on top of the grapefruit. And you wanna use half of the cup of sugar that you mixed with the vanilla. And then you're gonna put it into a lined baking pan. So I've already put tin foil in my pan. And then I'm gonna do the other half, exact same thing. And I'm sorry if this is getting confusing why we're bouncing one, one cocktail to the other, but I promise it will all make sense afterwards. So I just basically coated the sugar on top of the grapefruit. I'm gonna put it back into my pan. And I am taking a little bit of tin foil to kind of work around the grapefruit so they don't um, tip over because these are gonna get sticky and you want them to stay upright. So they're in my pan and I'm gonna stick them in the broiler for about two minutes. You want them to broil to where they're bursting and they're juicy and they're nice and brown on top. Um, so think creme brulee, you're basically bruleeing a grapefruit. All right. In the meantime, we can move on to our next cocktail, which is our Christmas cocktail. And I'm very excited about this one. Give me one second because I just need to rinse off my spoon. So I call this cocktail the Fresh Grinch. I almost called it the Fresh Grinch of Bel Air, but I thought maybe that was pushing it a little too far, especially with the Fresh Prince um, reunion happening, but it's fine. Um, so an ode to the Grinch himself, this cocktail is sweet and also spicy at the same time. And if you guys remember from our last cocktail session, I really like to play up on the sweet and spicy balance of my cocktails. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take just a small plate, any kind of small plate is fine, a bowl is fine, whatever you wanna do. And you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of just granulated sugar onto the plate can be white sugar, it can be brown sugar, it can be whatever sugar you want. Um, just enough so it's like an even little coating because we're gonna rim our cocktail glass. But you're not just gonna rim it with sugar, you're gonna take mint, you're gonna peel the mint off the stem and you're gonna fine dice it and mix it up into the granulated sugar itself. So I'm gonna take a couple leaves off our mint stems and I apologize if you can't see this exactly. My table's a little lower than the countertop. So I'm just gonna take my mint and I'm kind of gonna roll it, makes it easier to cut. And I'm just gonna chop it up. As fine as I can possibly get it because you do want it to stick in with the granulated sugar. So that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna basically take this chopped up mint and I'm gonna put it into my granulated sugar. And I'm gonna take my bar spoon and I'm just gonna kind of stir it in there. It doesn't need to be super well mixed in, but you want it substantial enough to where it's gonna to stick to the side of your cocktail glass. So next, you're gonna to wanna to take your rocks glass, which I just have, I know this looks small, but it's actually 10 ounces. Um, traditional rocks glasses are 10 ounce glasses. So you're gonna take your rocks glass, you're gonna take half of a lime. It doesn't need to be a half a lime. If it's a wedge of lime, that's fine. Anything to just wet the outside of the glass itself. And you're gonna run the lime around the edge of the cocktail glass. And the purpose of this is to give the um, sugar and mint a wet surface to stick to. So once you have that wet, you're gonna run it into your plated sugar. So you can see I now have a minted sugar cocktail. 
rimmed glass. So now that we have that done, we're gonna set that aside because you haven't made the cocktail yet. So I have a cocktail shaker. If you don't have a cocktail shaker, you can use a mason jar, you can use whatever you possibly have with a lid just to be able to shake things up. Um, it doesn't need to be like a, a dedicated cocktail shaker. Um, so I've already filled my cocktail shaker with ice. So it's just a small half with full of ice. And we are going to take vodka. This vodka is great. This is my Southern Tier Distilling Company vodka that I didn't have. So I put stickers on it to make you think it was Southern Tier. <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble for not using the brand. So you're going to take two ounces of vodka. So I'm going to use my jigger again. Again, if you don't have a jigger, just use a one and an eighth ounce. Uh, measuring cup, add it to your cocktail shaker. Okay, so two ounces of vodka in. Next step is we are going to add the juice of half a lime. So that same lime you used to add the, um, to rim the cocktail glass with, take it. I'm going to use a strainer if you don't need to. It's just because of pulp reasons. Um, and you can just juice it into the cocktail shaker itself. I don't have a citrus juicer. You don't need one, um, but they're definitely helpful. If you feel like you aren't getting enough of the citrus juice out of the fruit itself, I recommend taking the lime and rolling it on a cutting board while pressing it down hard. It's going to release a lot more of the juice prior to cutting it. Um, if not, take a fork, wiggle around in the half of the lime, and it'll work just fine too. Um, so squeeze that half of it lime in there. All right, I feel like I got pretty decent exposure out of that. And then we're also going to take half of a grapefruit juice or half of a grapefruit and juice it. This is not staying. This is a little bit harder to juice. I don't think anybody makes a citrus juicer this big, at least a handheld one. So I'm literally just going to take it and do the same thing I did with the lime, juice it into my cocktail shaker. Um, you should use a smaller grapefruit, but there were no small grapefruits at the grocery store. So I'm just gonna juice a small amount of this into the cocktail itself. Again, I'm just using the strainer because it keeps the pulp from getting in there and it also keeps the seeds from getting in there. But if you don't have a fine strainer like this, you can always just use your hand because your hand will catch the seeds and it will also catch the pulp without, with still letting the juice in between it. So after we've added our grapefruit juice, we're gonna add two teaspoons of honey. Um, I don't, I'm not super keen on measuring this just because it's to your preference how sweet you want the cocktail. I'm gonna use my bar spoon, which I need to wipe off. And I'm just literally gonna dip it into the honey. I'm gonna add one teaspoon. And then I'm gonna add another. I don't like my cocktail super sweet, so I'm doing a little bit less than, two, than a teaspoon two teaspoons, but again, to your preference. The only problem with honey is it never wants to come off. Okay. And then after that, we are going to add two jalapeno spices. And this is where our little heat comes in. I am going to use tongs because I have contacts and I don't like to touch jalapenos when I have to take my contacts out later because I've had very bad experiences. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of tongs. So I'm going to add one jalapeno slice, and I'm going to add a second jalapeno slice. Maybe if I can pick it up. You can always add more. You can always add less. You don't have to include them at all should you not want any kind of heat. So that's our cocktail in a glass. You're going to add, put your shaker top on. Well, if you're using a Boston shaker, you're going to put your top on. If you're not using a Boston shaker, don't worry about it. Um, and you're going to shake the cocktail extremely well because you need that honey to emulsify. Right now, the honey is in a cold glass, so it's sitting as a lump. So you really, really need to shake it in order for it to blend well with the cocktail. So excuse me for a minute while I shake in your guys' ears. I almost just hit my light. Now that I got my workout in, so 
so you always know when you have a good, a well-shaped cocktail because your shaker starts to get a frosted um, kind of color to it. Like you start seeing the ice build out up, up on the outside. So that's how I always tell you, know your cocktail's been shaken well enough. Um, so that's done. I'm going to pop my shaker off. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, even still, my honey's still kind of chunked up on the side. It's crazy what it does. If for some reason your honey is not emulsifying, prior you can always make a honey syrup. So it's just basically equal parts honey and warm water and you just stir it together. I'm not super concerned with it to begin with because I don't really like sweet cocktails. But so you're going to take your pre-rimmed sugar glass and you're going to fill it with ice. And then you're going to take your well shaken cocktail and you're going to strain it into your ice glass. You always, this is what's called dirty ice. The ice from the cocktail is called dirty ice. Um, typically, if you're making a cocktail, you always want to leave that out and pour over fresh ice because it will melt a lot faster due to the exposure of alcohol. My dog just made an appearance. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the last part of this cocktail is you want to add a fresh ginger beer on top, which is really going to round out that final spice. Um, I love ginger beer, and I think the quality of the ginger beer you get matters, too. I am partial to fever tree. It's a little bit spicier and has more of that fresh ginger hint. Um, at the distillery, we typically use all fever tree mixers. They're just high quality, like pure tonic water. And they're actually really good for you if you drink them plain as well. I bought the light ginger beer to start with just because I don't like as much sugar. Again, personal preference, but to each in his own. So give me one second. They come in these cute little itty bitty bottles. Um, they sell them at Publix or Harris Teeter. You can also buy bigger bottles at like Total Wine and places like that. Um, so you just pop the top, pop the top off. And you're gonna top your cocktail with the ginger beer. And the last part of this cocktail is pomegranate seeds, which I absolutely love especially because they're in season right now. So I'm just going to take a spoonful of pomegranate seeds. There's honey on my spoon, so they're not coming off. It's fine. Whoa! Get this one everywhere. We're going to add a spoonful of uh, pomegranate seeds to the cocktail, stir it in, and now you have yourself a crunch. So there's pomegranate seeds, jalapeno spice, and mint. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's very light and refreshing. Highly recommend. Ten out of ten. Laura, what what uh recipe did you decide to pair with this one? <laughs> uh, I decided to do a shrimp ceviche for a couple of reasons. Cause when I saw that there was a little bit of spice in that, I always kind of go to the like Latin kind of flavors that have a little kick in them. And then I love that this is red green and white so it's kind of got a Christmassy theme so we're gonna do a shrimp ceviche and I will tell you you can cheat with this recipe so if you don't want to do like a traditional like ceviche where you cook the shrimp with lime juice because that's essentially what we do we're cooking the shrimp and lime juice you can buy already cooked shrimp and add some lime juice in and you cut out a whole step so with that being said, what I did, and I had to do this a little earlier because it takes about three to four hours for the shrimp to cook. So you can see I have my shrimp in here. I don't, can you guys see that? If you can not, cool. So I stirred it a couple of times while it was in the fridge. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain, um, I'm gonna drain all the juice out. And I was gonna scoop it out, but I think I'm just gonna drain it and then put that all in there. So all my reserved lime juice is going into this little bowl, minus those few little peppers that escaped. And then I'm gonna put the juice to the side because I'm gonna add a little juice in in a little bit. So I have my shrimp here and I'll show you, I just kind of put it into like bite-sized pieces. So small little pieces, 
And I think in the recipe, I said to have the shrimp and then cut it. My shrimp, I didn't, was a little on the smaller side, so I didn't have it. So I just cut it into like little bite-sized pieces. So if it's a big, large jumbo shrimp, have it so it's not a big old chunk. And if it's on the smaller side, you're fine. Just cut it the way it is. So now we're gonna start adding everything to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use my pepper and you're gonna make this as spicy as you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the seeds out because my husband likes a little bit of a bite, but he doesn't love like a lot of bite. So I'm gonna take the seeds out and discard them and not put them in. If it were me, I'd have all the seeds in there. I'm gonna take the vein out of it as well. And again, as Casey said earlier, be careful when you're working with any type of hot pepper because that oil will stay on your hands for quite a while. And if you touch your eyes or you touch your face, it will kind of sting and cause a burn. So now I'm gonna slide this out of the way. I'm just gonna cut this into super thin slices. And I did, just because it's two of us here tonight, I did a half a recipe. So I cut mine in half. So instead of doing a whole pound of shrimp, I did a half a pound of shrimp. And I'm just gonna dice it up nice and small. This is a dice and dump kind of recipe, which is why I like it. You can use jalapeno, you can use serrano, you can use habanero. So whatever kind of spice you, whatever kind of um, pepper you like, you can put it in there. Jalapeno tends to be a little milder. Um, I saw these serranos, so I grabbed a serrano today. I'm gonna put in some tomato. Now I, I said Roma tomatoes in the recipe and the reason why I say Roma tomatoes is because there's more flesh in the Roma tomato and less seed. So what I'm gonna do is just seed my tomato and just use the flesh because the seed will make it, you don't want the texture of the seed and then all the liquid from the tomato will kind of make it watery and you don't want it watery. So I'm gonna cut everything kind of into probably the same size as the shrimp would be. So that same kind of bite size. For the shrimp. And I have a medium one here. So I'm going to add maybe a, another little quarter because I didn't get quite enough in there. Again, pulling the seeds out and the flesh is fine. So if you see like with this wedge, so there's a wedge there, there's no seeds in it. I'm just gonna use the inner flesh and then whatever is on the outside. Chop it up. All right, and then I'm gonna add some avocado. Now I try to look for more of a firm avocado um, just because it'll hold up a little more. And this is a pretty big avocado. So I'm only gonna use about a third of the avocado. So I score it both ways and I twist and it comes off, right? So then all I'm gonna do is take my spoon and I'm gonna run it along the outside, scoop it out. So I run the bottom of the spoon all along the skin and it pops out nice and easily. And then I'm just gonna chop this into the same Uniform, that is a little dirty there, like a little bruise there. So I don't wanna put that in there because I want it all to look pretty and fresh. And then again, chop, it goes in. I love avocado, so I tend to put a little more avocado in anyway. So good for you. So the avocado's in there. I'm gonna give my hands a quick wipe. All right, and I'm gonna give it a bit of a stir now, just to kind of mix it all up.
And then I'm just gonna kind of check to see if maybe I wanna add a little more tomato. I mean, this is all, you know, it's your preference. If you want a little more tomato in there, throw a little more tomato in there. If you want a little more avocado in there, add more avocado. Now that that's in there, I'm gonna add some cilantro. And I, I add everything, the stem. There's a lot of flavor in the stem. So don't be afraid to use the stem. I just take the big stem off and whatever little stem is in here, I just chop it all up. This is almost like the, you know, the Christmas wreath part of the recipe. And I'm gonna add that in. I'm gonna grab a little bit of salt. Add a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna take about, I don't know, I'm gonna start with like one spoonful. I'm gonna do two, cause this is a little bit. And then I'm just gonna stir it all together. Now you can serve this a couple of different ways. So you can serve it as a first course, as a salad. You could serve it as an appetizer. Sometimes I like to put it in little shot glasses with a little spoon, and then I put it out on the counter and then people can just come up and take their little shot of ceviche. So I'm gonna show you two different ways today. So here we have, just if I was gonna serve this as an appetizer, I'm just gonna put this or as a salad course. I'm just gonna put it all in here. You can see, hopefully you can see all the colors. Hard to see, I think. And then I always like to throw like a couple little tortilla chips in here. So I'll put one in here, one in here, and then maybe one in here. So can you guys see that? Cool. And then we'll go back to our little phyllo cups. This is another way to serve it. So with the phyllo cup, you're just gonna take some and put some in the little phyllo cup. Get a little bit of tomato on there. And again, I pre-baked the phyllo cups just for a couple of minutes to make them super crispy. So Denise, I know you were talking earlier and this half a pound of shrimp does, it makes a lot. So for two people, this is perfect. Or even if you were just having like a, a little dinner party, right? And then I'm just gonna take a little piece of cilantro cause you always want kind of a little bit of green in there to kind of make it look pretty. And I always find just a place to tuck it in and just, it peeks out. And there you have it. So you have your three little phyllo cups. So can you guys see? And then otherwise here, you would just serve your little, the little cute little fork. I'm like, I'm all into like cute little silverware. So I have a lot of little forks, knives and spoons. I don't know why it's just so cute. So that's why I do it. So there you have it and I wish I had the cocktail to taste it with because I think they would work really well. See, Casey, what we should have done was I should have made them all. I should have sent you all this. You should have made them all. And then we could have like compared notes. Uh, no, we should have thought about that. Clearly, we were not prepared. <laughs> Clearly. Next time we will have it like down. now we know. Yes. <laughs> I'm still sipping that cocktail pairing over here. It was excellent. So I am just jealous that you have ceviche in front of you because it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite versatile appetizers as well. Cool. Denise, did you make it? Somebody's making it, yeah. Um, I did not. I'm going to make it after. So I have it sitting. It's been sitting all day or, well, since 2 o'clock cooking in the lime juice. So I'm going to make it after the call. So I'm I'm ready. But I, I made that, um, <laughs> I made the patch, the one with the, uh, which the first one, 
the yeah. first drink, a bushel in a patch. And I used, yeah. um, I used bourbon and, uh, what do you call it? Um, hard apple cider because I had no regular apple cider and pumpkin oh, pie spice and it worked really? beautifully. I like no. that idea. So I don't know. Once I finish the glass, I'm not sure if I'm cooking or not. <laughs> Well, fortunately, the shrimp's already cooked, so you don't have that much to do. Yeah, that's true. Just chopping, but I don't know if I should be using a sharp knife. But anyway. Maybe sharp utensils aren't the best <laughs> idea. Feel you on that one. <laughs> I'm the well, only one over here drinking all three cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Continue on. Yeah. <laughs> so our next and final cocktail is our New Year's Eve cocktail. Um, I know it probably seemed like a lot of preparation since we really started from our first cocktail and brought it through to the end of the series, um, but it's really not. So what we did to summarize things is I took a grapefruit and I halved it. And then I took half a cup of sugar and I took some vanilla extract and I mixed the sugar and the vanilla together. And I saw in the message, but I'm honestly, I'm so blind in the group chat. Oh, Denise said, I found vanilla beans super cheap at Costco, which is great to know because you could also use fresh vanilla beans. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Did anybody hear that? <laughs> the champagne just burst open while it was sitting here. It's fine. I didn't get hit. <laughs> oh boy, that scared me. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I need to recollect myself for a minute. <laughs> that all right it's always eventful around me I swear I do not live a boring life I knew I shouldn't have taken the, the foil off yet but I just thought I was being prepared um so back to the cocktail <laughs> um so I had taken the grapefruit halved it took half a cup of granulated sugar mixed it with vanilla extract and then you took the vanilla and granulated sugar mixture and you put it on top of the grapefruit you stuck the grapefruit half in the oven on broil and you, and you let it basically brulee itself. So now that my grapefruit has cooled a little bit, because you definitely do not want to touch them right out of the oven. They're nice. You can see they're literally dripping. Can you see the, the, like, the brulee, the crispiness of it? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to juice it. It's still warm. So you're going to juice the entire grapefruit. So I'm taking both halves. And I'm just going to squeeze it into a measuring cup season all. And it squeezes hot. I don't recommend doing this this soon. But I am going to use my little, my master gloves, my Cuisinart rubbing, rubber gloves so I don't burn myself. So I'm just going to get my grapefruit and I'm going to juice into, it's literally just a measuring cup. So my grapefruit juice is pretty hot right now, which isn't ideal. Don't recommend it this fast, but um, definitely let, if you're going to decide to make this cocktail, definitely let um, your grapefruit chill a little bit more. The flavors you're going to get are really, really unique because you basically roasted vanilla with grapefruit. Um, you're not going to see a lot of those flavor pairings together, but you've done it pretty simply here. And it's funny because when I first sent this cocktail to Laura, I said to her, I was like, I don't, you know, New Year's Eve is so overrated. I prefer New Year's Day because who doesn't love starting New Year's Day in the first day of a new year off with a great cocktail. Um, so this is kind of where this got inspired from. So I've completely juiced both the grapefruit well, grapefruit half, I should say, um, with the brulee sugar topping on it. Now, grapefruits are very, very bitter to begin with. So you're actually going to take the remaining half cup of your sugar. Well, it's probably about a quarter now because you should have used about half of it on top of your grapefruit. And you're going to add it into that juice. I recommend adding as much as you would like to your discretion. Personally, again, I don't like super sweet cocktails. I would rather have them on the bitter side. So just stir it in as you would like. But just knowing how bitter grapefruit juice is, 
scoop quite a bit in there. So I've probably added about three fourths of the half cup, whatever that measurement is. The math supersedes me tonight. So I'm gonna stir the remaining sugar into my juice. Make sure it's nice and stirred up well because you don't want to be eating a bunch of sugar chunks. I'm going to take my champagne glass. And I actually bought Prosecco because I like Prosecco. And this is what Total Wine recommended instead of champagne when I was mixing it with a cocktail. So I was like, okay, I'll trust you. Not a big champagne drinker, but I like Prosecco. So um, and again, you can choose whatever sparkling or bubbly you like, you can use champagne, you can use Prosecco, you can use a sparkling wine, you can use a sparkling water, you can use sparkling soda, you don't have to make this alcoholic. I did also give non-alcoholic um, variations on each one of the recipes. So I'm going to take my conveniently opened bottle of Prosecco, thank you gravity, and I'm going to pour it into the glass. And if I'm drinking a mimosa, most of the time I prefer majority champagne or Prosecco to the fruit, to the group, fruit juice itself. So I'm gonna pour majority of my Prosecco into there. I'm gonna grab my strainer, just because there is some seeds and there are some um, pulp in the grapefruit juice. And I'm gonna strain about a tablespoon of grapefruit juice into the glass itself. So you're gonna kind of get this murky color. Now, like I said before, my favorite part of the cocktail itself is the garnish because who doesn't like to make a pretty cocktail? I typically will take a grapefruit and I'll just wedge it. So I literally just took a triangle out of a half um, and I did it this way because I already had it cut that way. But also it looks nicer because it's a little bit thicker on the side of the glass. You're gonna to wanna to cut a slice into it up to the rind and then garnish your cocktail. Happy New Year's Day. That's it. That one's so easy. It seems complicated, but here we are. And I know Laura has made an awesome cocktail or an awesome appetizer to pair with the cocktail. Okay, so. Carrying on. It's so funny that when Casey said she was doing a New Year's Day cocktail as opposed to a New Year's Eve cocktail, I too am a big New Year's Day kind of like person. You know, I don't know whether I kind of did all of my woohooing too early on on New Year's Eve that I'm just like, oh, overdone with it. I rather celebrate the new year. I mean, especially this year, right? Because New Year's Eve this year, I don't know, it's going to be a big celebration the night before and a big celebration the day after. Goodbye, COVID. Hello, New Year. So with that being said, I, again, love pairing cheeses with phyllo cups. So I decided to use, I'm hoping maybe you guys have heard of the brie or not, but it's a triple brie cream with mushrooms in it. And I like to use it for with a lot of different things. A lot of times I'll do it as a, um, I'll use it in a mac and cheese. I'll use it on pizza. I'll use it um, just on crostini with different things. But I like this with fig butter. I sometimes I'll do it if I want it a little sweet too, I'll do it with a little raspberry jam or apricot jam. But because of the cocktail that Casey chose and with the vanilla that's infused with it, we kind of decided this was like a little bit of a collaboration as to kind of what fruit to use. We decided to go with the fig. And when I looked at fig jelly as opposed to fig butter, I like the more savory end of the fig butter as opposed to the jelly. And you can get this at Trader Joe's right now. You know, I'm the big fan of, of Trader Joe's. This is delicious on croissants. It's delicious on pizza. It just gives like, it takes like that real like sweetness almost out of like, like a fig jelly or a fig, you know, the Dalmatia fig, right? That has the orange in it, which tends to be over sweet. This kind of really cuts the sweet. So what I'm gonna do with these is I have my trusty, my little phyllo shells. I'm gonna put them on a baking sheet. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, now I can take the uh, little thing off of here, the label, and I'm gonna cut the rind 
off of the brie. This makes an amazing grilled cheese too, by the way, with some like caramelized shallots. It's to die for. And I'm just gonna quarter it. Kind of like bite-sized pieces. So you want like a good amount to fill. And it's easier to cut when it's refrigerated. And I'm just gonna put like a little wedge into each phyllo cup. I'm gonna press it in because I want enough cheese. And I think I need a little more. I want enough cheese in each phyllo cup. This is super easy. And like I said, play with the different flavors. You know, if you're more into like raspberries, put raspberry on here. And then all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this fig butter, put it on top. Super easy. And it's all gonna melt down so you don't have to kind of be real fussy with it. And it's more rustic looking. And I love the fact that, you know, it all comes together. And then all I'm gonna do is put it in a 350 degree oven for like five minutes. So excuse me. And then I'm gonna pair it with a nut. So this I think would work really nice with any nut. I think it would work nice with toasted almonds, with walnuts. I think it would, uh, pistachios, like toasted pistachios would be really pretty on here, especially during the holidays to add a little hint of green. But I always have sliced almonds. So I toasted some sliced almonds and that's what I'm gonna put in mine. But with the magic of like Zoom TV, Ta-da, <laughs> they're gonna slide. So they're done. So all I did was I took like three little toasted almonds. I kind of put them in at the top to kind of make it little pre really pretty. And there you go. If you have, you know, leftover, I don't know, from the night before, maybe some caramelized onions or something, I would throw that in here too. And that would just be really, really nice as well. So there you have it. That looks amazing. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? You can all unmute yourselves now. And if you want to put it into a gallery view so everybody can see each other, we could do that. I have a, a question. Sure. I have a drink question. Can you sure. use, can you make the cocktail, the cocktail for the grapefruit? Can you? do that ahead of time and then put the juice in the fridge and then use it later? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Okay. It'd probably be easier that way because then it would be nice and chilled. Um, and so I had brulee the grapefruit ahead of time um, yesterday just to make sure it worked correctly because I hadn't tried it yet. And just so you guys know, you get awesome subtle hints of vanilla with the grapefruit. Totally recommend it. And it's a super easy, very fancy way to impress your guests. If you're having guests over during this COVID time, you're uh, 10 people or whatever the limit is during um, Thanksgiving and your holiday. So it's awesome. Highly recommend. It's super easy to do and really not that complicated, but that's a great question. You can absolutely do it ahead of time. And I apologize for the uh, champagne bottle popping, <laughs> scaring the <laughs> life out of me. <laughs> Stacey, what I, what I love about your recipes is that whether it's a party of 10 or a party of two, they're very conducive to either two people or a larger crowd. So great job. Thank you. Yes, very I much. Follow, I follow soup. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel? You Yes, I'd like to share a little trick that I learned recently. Um, when you want some um, lemon on, on a plate, like, like the plate that we, we did, whoops, you just cut one edge a little bit and then you insert a toothpick just like this and then you squeeze it with your hand and you'll see it's going to fall very, very easily as if you had a, a bottle. So wow! Really, but the, the, yeah, you you just cut a little bit at the edge with a knife. Then you insert 
one uh -huh. toothpick and maybe you do like two or three rounds like this and then you squeeze it and you'll see it's no mess and and you can save your lemon for another time and it's really cool that's brilliant we love it what a genius hack that brilliant. <laughs> can you really repeat, good hack can you repeat that a little bit i missed the very beginning not the toothpick but the other part sure. please so mm -hmm. when you need when you need to put some lemon on a plate and you don't want to mess your hands or to juice it or and you you know you only need a, a tiny bit you can take your lemon you cut one one end with a knife very like a small cut then you insert a toothpick that mine is red you just turn it two or three times and then you squeeze you squeeze your lemon and you'll see the juice will will come down very easily the lemon has to be room temperature and you can roll it before you cut one end before so it's it's all juicy. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. What? <laughs> Anybody and, else? And and your recipes are excellent. Thank you so much both of you. You're welcome. Hey, yeah. you know what is really nice too and I'm just saying like I'm not a big pumpkin pie person. And a lot of my family members are not big on pumpkin pie, but whenever we have like pumpkin pie, you know, you have to have it for Thanksgiving. This is a great alternative. If you have like a, a, a dessert that is like not going to go a long way, you could make like a third of the recipe or a quarter of the recipe and put it in these little phyllo shells and then put it out or even do it like with apple pie so that people, because by the time you're done with dinner, right, you're just like so full. But here you get to like really do like a mm -hmm. tasting of like each little dessert. You mm -hmm. can do some pumpkin pie. You could, do, and these freeze really well, by the way, too. You can do some cheesecake or little apple pie tartlets or chocolate cream pie, you know, banana cream pie, coconut cream pie. So everybody gets like a bite. It's a nice way to sit there and be able to say, oh, I'm going to have a bite of apple pie. I'll have a bite of pumpkin pie. I'll have a bite of, you know, Cheesecake, my mother was always, every, every Thanksgiving, we always had cheesecake. That's kind of like one of our fans. So not traditional, like Thanksgiving, but we always have one. So. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I love how the cocktails and the appetizers complemented each other. You all put so much thought into that. Thank you so much. Well, You're I get welcome. that credit to Laura because I make the cocktails and she works around me. So. <laughs> But it's actually fun to sit there and listen to the flavors that Casey's coming up with. And then for me to sit there and go, oh my gosh. And I kind of like tried to go through our arsenal of like some things that we've done in the past and looking at how we could use those things over again, especially like with the hummus dip, that was always like a huge hit and everybody loves it, but it's just a different way to kind of do it. Well, it's super especially versatile. Yes, exactly. And then especially when you're in a situation with COVID and maybe you want to have like a little bit of a dinner party and, and have it be social distancing, it might be a little more work, but you could do that in your little phyllo cups and then everybody gets a taste. So you make everybody like their own little, you know, smorgasbord of appetizers. That's my favorite word, smorgasbord. <laughs> like, I can give you a smorgasbord of anything. Sign me up. <laughs> there you go.